Welcome everyone, my name is Dr. Fernando de la Peña and this is a new episode of our, of our Holocaust, a combination of a hologram and a podcast and today I have with me Mark Reagan, Holonaut, business partner of AX Tech. Mark, welcome. Thanks Fernando, glad to be here. Hey, please tell me about you, what is an Aquanaut? <laughs> An aquanaut is someone that has lived and worked underneath the sea in saturation for at least 24 hours. Okay, Mark, I'm intrigued by something uh, that is more like a science fiction stuff. Most of the planet is water, and moons like Europa, they have three times more water than Earth. How possible it is for humans to live under the sea? And why we are not living under the sea? What are the challenges? For me, it seems like a pretty logical option that we have been bouncing for generations, but that didn't happen. <laughs> yeah, it's... It is a romantic, exotic, uh, mysterious place, and it, it certainly draws people's interest. Um, but the biggest problem is that we have to breathe air. We don't have gills, so we have to have mechanical life support systems keep us alive under the sea. And, uh, you know, it really wasn't until this past century that the, those kinds of systems were developed uh, to the scale that people could live and work under the sea for any appreciable length of time. So when, when we talk about that, you know, we're, there are basically two ways people live under the sea. One is in submarines, but submarines keep a surface pressure uh, so you can basically go to whatever depth you want and pop up to the surface and open the hatch and go on shore and uh, get some leave and recreational time if you're in a submarine. That's not saturation. Saturation is when your body is feeling the pressure at the depth that you're living at. Uh, and when you get saturated, it's very... There's a long physiological process you have to go through to safely get back to the surface. That's called decompression. And um, so if you are saturated, if you are living as an aquanaut, you have to go through a long decompression uh, process at the end in order to come back home safely. And so the physiology of that uh, and the physics of that and also the engineering for the systems that allow that to be possible. All of that really only came of age within about the last hundred years, even less than that. So it's, it's a relatively new thing in human history to be an aquanaut. Although, you know, you think about Jules Verne, people have been fantasizing about living and working in the sea for much longer than that. Fascinating. So, do you see as a possibility that as technology evolves, we can live underwater in a couple of years, generations? So, you know, the engineering challenge of working under the sea is a pretty daunting challenge. Uh, the materials we use, metals, uh, electronics, all of that stuff is always under attack in a marine environment. Uh, it, those things oxidize very quickly in the presence of seawater and oxygen. Uh, and then also the pressure differences are build up very quickly underwater. You know, we live under this huge atmosphere of air here on the surface of Earth. Uh, and it's only what, you know, we call that one atmosphere of pressure uh, as a measurement of pressure. But just 33 feet, just 10 meters under the sea, you've built up another atmosphere worth of pressure. And at, six, at two, 
at 20 meters under the sea, you've built, you're at suddenly three atmospheres of pressure. So you don't have to get very deep uh, before the pressure is building very quickly on you uh, under the sea. And so the engineering challenge of both keeping people alive, keeping systems operating, and withstanding the pressure so that the so that the people can and the systems can survive is pretty daunting and you know if you're talking about colonies or habitats that have lots of people living in them it's it would be an expensive proposition and mark you are an aquanaut um uh, what's an aquanaut how do you do that yeah, I, I, I'm an aquanaut by virtue of uh, having lived in the Aquarius habitat, actually on several different occasions um, of between four and nine days at a time. Uh, but, you know, within 24 hours, I was fully saturated at that depth uh, and and therefore you know, the title of Aquanaut, but uh, those missions were, you know, living and working from inside that habitat, and that uh, that was, you know, really quite a life-affirming experience for me. Uh, it was, you know, particularly interesting to be on the other side of the aquarium. You know, we have aquariums where we look at the sea life, uh, and we go by and go about our daily lives. But uh, when you're living inside a habitat like that under the sea, you are the, you're in the aquarium. The sea life is going about its everyday life and peering in and, and noticing the funny creatures that are trapped in there. Uh, so it's, it's a different perspective. And it's um, really the only time, you know, for me as an avid scuba diver, it's the only time I've had enough time under the water uh, continuously to really s just stop and appreciate everything that's going on around me, to appreciate that uh, some fish, some little fish owns this little chunk of space and he'll defend it, you know, tooth and nail against all comers because that's his little piece of space and you start to get used to different fishes personalities and and where you can find them and if you don't see a fish where you where you always see that fish one day you wonder did he get eaten last night or what happened did he get chased away by somebody else and uh, it's it's funny when you get enough time you start to really identify with the neighborhood you start to to feel uh, a kinship with everyone else that lives in the neighborhood. Wow. So Mark, you're part of a very selected group of people. And maybe you're part of the future of humankind. I, I think mean that people will be living under the sea in a couple of years. Or maybe not. But it makes a perfect sense for me. It's like most of our planet is water, right? Do how do you see the humankind in ten years? Are we going to live under water, or how do you see that? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, there have been approximately sixty human undersea habitats to date. Uh, at the moment, none of them are operational. But uh, you know, going back to the time of Jacques Cousteau. Uh, and feeding forward until just a year ago when the Aquarius habitat uh, finally closed its doors to saturation missions. Uh, there have been about 60 habitats from a number of different nations and a number of different locations around the world. And uh, so since this has been technically possible, we've seen, you know, kind of a an interest increase and in, in dropping over time. And uh, I know that there are other efforts going on today to try to create undersea habitats again and uh, bring this capability back to this planet. Uh, 
I don't know. I don't think either one of those are, um, you know, hundreds of people scale kind of habitats. They're half a dozen people scale habitats, to my knowledge. But um, but there are at least a couple of serious efforts going on to build undersea habitats the next generation. So I guess... Uh, I guess we will wait and see how these things pan out, but I'm hopeful that we are just at a pause point in undersea human habitation and not at the end of it, and I think that's going to be true. I think we'll see more of this in the future. That's fascinating, Mark. Well, thank you so much for being part of this Holocaust. Um, if it's possible, let's just shake hands to have a picture. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Thank bud. You, Thank you, bud. We'll talk soon.